Hello, everyone. My name is Charles Thompson, Executive Advisor with Power. Welcome to our Solar Mastery Training course, and today's topic is solar eligibility. So let's go ahead and frame this up a little bit for you here and help you understand why we're doing this particular type of training. It's really to help you get better educated, help you establish more confidence, but it's not intended to help you become an expert. Let's leave that to the dozens and soon to be hundreds of professional solar providers who are part of our incredible platform and our serviceable areas. When you get a question about eligibility, you know, know with confidence it's going to be handled, but then typically we recommend that you frame your response somewhere along these lines. If that's a great question, every home is different. And as a side note, every situation is different. Their, their location, their utilities, their state, their city, all of these are different, and it's best to leave it to the expert. So, Let's see what is true for your home. Go ahead and send me a copy of your electric bill. That'll get the process started. We'll put your information into our platform and I'll introduce you to name the solar provider or solar providers. And that'll get that question answered and the other questions you might have and also set us up for you to have a day and time for that free solar consultation. With that said, let's look at is this home, and this applies to businesses as well to a lesser extent, but it's, is it good for solar? If you look at these topics, this is a real estate matter. We'll look at that. We'll look at the shading, the direction of the home, the usage and their cost and what their credit needs to look like. So when we look at the roof, what we're looking for is the orientation. Is it facing in the right direction? The best direction for a roof to receive the most exposure to the sun, the UV rays, is a southward facing roof. You can do east and west as well. Typically you cannot do north with very few exceptions. So that is a very important factor of how one home might be eligible for more solar than another. We look at the roof quality. If the shingles are ratty, not intact, they're going to need to be replaced before we apply solar. And oftentimes that shows you a lack of care about their home in the first place, so just keep that in perspective. And then the third is, are there trees? Are there issues that are going to create shading, proximity to the home? So let's take a look and dive in a little bit. So it is a matter of real estate. If you look at these homes over here on the side, take a look at this home with a nice kind of level roof, a lot of room, not a lot of protrusions coming, fireplaces that are blocking the potential for the sun, as opposed to this roof. Beautiful roof, by the way. However, not a lot of access to where you can put panels. Same here. We did put some on this particular home, but look at these protrusions that prevent us from putting any panels there. This is another example. It's a, again, a beautiful home, but these dormers prevent us really from putting any panels that will have access to the sun. So again, when you look at not all homes are equal, the roof, the real estate is a very big part of that. And here's an example of shingles. I mean, the, these are probably an indication that the homeowner's not particularly caring for their home, but without being judgmental, know that if we're going to put solar there, it's going to have to be replaced. Now, benefits are, if they put solar on a home on today's tax standards, they can actually get tax credit for the portion of the roof that's being replaced to accommodate solar. So it's an opportunity, this way I kind of look at it. And then is there good access? I mean, this is an indication of a street that I would just completely stay away from because you're not going to get any UV rays. You're not going to get sun that shines upon that home. It's kind of obvious, but let's dive in and look at it. Sometimes you have to look at this from above to really know because it's a little bit uh, misleading, if you will. So here's an example. Look at the shade that comes over the back of this home. And, and that's a large home, but uh, look at the shade on the back side. That home would get no access to the sun. And the canyon this side, of course, is beautiful, it's wide open. That's one of the things that we look at. So we want to look at roofs that are typically southward or east-west facing and without a lot of challenges on that roof with obstacles that will block the sunlight. So in this case, you can actually see shade from these protrusions here. So if that was a fireplace, it would create a, even more shade as the direction of the sun went through. So let's dive in and look at one of the things that I typically want to coach on shading issues. Just take it two times the height of the roof. And, and, and sometimes if you just keep it as simple as that, tree is going to hit the home in any way, it is going to create a shading issue if it's on the south side of the home. If it's 
that's on the north side, it's not going to be an issue because we're not going to be putting panels on the north side of the home. So try to look at some basics. So look at this example. Is this a good or bad roof when it comes to solar? Well, let's see where the direction is. This is facing south. All right, take a look here. Boom. This gets to show you that that home is covered in shade during the day. However, go across the street, look at every home that's along that street is going to be a great candidate for sun, the UV rays to hit. So if you look at it, oftentimes you just go to Google Earth and you pull that home up, you're going to see what the providers are going to see, even though they may be using a little bit more sophisticated technology. So take another look. Here's a perfect home. Even though that tree, you can see the shade. It, the shade is affecting the home, but that tree is not going to hit the home if it falls. It's not going to hit the panels, etc. Perfect roof, and it's nice and level, not a lot of protrusions that are coming from the roof. And there you go. You look at that roof from the Google Earth, and you can see straight down. There's nothing that's going to impact the ability of that home to go solar. Oddly enough, on the back side of their home is where they have all the protrusions. More and more as the homes are being built these days, they're, they're being built with renewable energy in mind, but most of the homes that are out there are dated. So then the other part of this, it gives you a little perspective on what we're looking on a real estate side, is the usage and the cost matters because that's going to determine A, the size of the system. So this graph that you're gonna find in the bill is actually an important factor in designing the system. And it says, here's how much energy we actually have to replace from what they're getting with the dirty energy grid with clean energy from the solar panels. That's the indicator. That's why we collect the bill before we go and even put the prospect into our platform. And then the size of the bill, the cost matters. Typically we want to be north of $100 on a bill. There are some exceptions to that, but generally speaking for this to result in savings, we are typically going to be north of $100 on a bill. And then the price per kilowatt is actually important as well. Now, you'll need to know your markets. We're an international company and that's different in every market. Every home's different. Every market's different. So know what your typical requirements are. Generally, my experience has been, and this is changing as costs come down, but it's been about 10 cents a kilowatt. It's kind of the rock bottom that we can compete at. So if you look at how do you determine what that kilowatt price is, take their total bill. That's all taxes, fees, and everything included. And when we cover understanding the bill, you'll, you'll understand why we want to talk about the total bill. And then you divide that by the number of kilowatt hours that they purchased during that particular billing period. And that will give you the rate that they pay per kilowatt. So again, know your market, but generally it's going to be north of 10 cents and generally more than $100 per month. It's kind of the minimum criteria that most of our providers work with. Now, the other aspect here is the credit for the customer. When they're purchasing cash, obviously their credit has no factor whatsoever. But on loans and leases, generally we're looking at a 650 on the Empirica score. And there are some programs out there that don't look at the credit score. They'll look at home equity, the percentage of equity that they have in the home. You'll know your market. You'll know what your providers are using as you start to use the platform. And then, of course, speak with your sponsor, your upline, everyone who's working with you, and you'll get to know your particular market. So now that you know some of the elements that will qualify your home or business for solar, use the power platform, use the experts at our pre-screened installers and financial companies and use that as a great opportunity to get a free solar consultation for your prospects and help them be part of our platform, be part of our movement and help us shift the world from dirty energy to clean energy. Thanks for listening and the best is ahead.